Season's greetings and happy 2024. Happy New Year. I know I've been gone for a minute, but that's because I've been slacking. Now I've been lazy, to put it quite bluntly. And I'm not quite proud of that, but over the course of December, my son was born. And he is the absolute most adorable little thing. Now, something that I had a major fear of for the entirety of my adolescent and adult life is that I don't feel ready to be a father. And something that I realized while going through this last, these last three weeks or so of fatherhood is that it doesn't really matter if you're ready or whether or not you feel mentally ready or financially ready or what have you. I mean, it is important if you are financially ready. I would say that's probably the second most important thing, but yes, I mean, there's not really a good time to tell when you're ready. But what made me ready was the fact that my wife was ready. She wanted to be able to have a baby and it was my responsibility to be able to give that to her. So I did and She's been very happy, and quite frankly, I'm, I've been quite a lot better off lately, too. And the reason that I wanted to bring this up is because I wanted to kind of make this video just talking about my experience so far, three weeks into being a father, which I know isn't long at all. I feel like it's important as a new father to kind of share my insights about parenting so far. But being a new father has kind of lit, like, snapped a new fire i don't have a, a, a lighter to light the candle behind me for reference but it's kind of lit a fire inside of me that made me realize that if i really want to give my son and potentially a future daughter if we're lucky enough a really good life then i need to be able to actually act on what i know i need to do and there are a whole bunch of influencers out there that are also going to tell you the same thing. Go get fit. Go get money. Go get bitches. Go get this. Go get freedom. Go get travel. And that's all well and good and important. Don't get me wrong. However, none of it actually helps you prepare to create a family. Creating a family, and from my one experience so far, has been entirely her decision. And then it's just on me to be the proper husband and do my husbandly duty and give her what she wants. And she wanted a baby this year. Well, last year, she wanted a baby in 2023. So I, so I had to provide it to her and I did. And we have a very healthy baby now. And so far it's been very easy to take care of him so far. I mean, he is, of course, still only three weeks old. And at this stage of life, he's still very reliant on my wife and I. And it is true that we have to wake up every two to three hours to feed him and change his diaper and everything. But that's the only drawback, honestly. Everything else has been really nice. He's been a super healthy baby. He doesn't cry unnecessarily. The only times that he really does cry is when he's hungry or when he needs his diaper changed, or when he wants attention. But then the moment you pick him up, he's calm. He's immediately calm. And something that I realized is that I can like pick him up for five minutes and stare at him and just kind of like sing to him and something for about five minutes. And then I can put him down and do a little bit of dishes. And then by the time five more minutes goes by, he wants attention. So I'll come back, pick him up and do this little five minute cycle of spending five minutes with my son in five minutes doing whatever chore, whatever task that I want to while my wife is asleep. But if she's awake like she is now, she's just taking care of him. But another thing that's been kind of troubling to me is the fact that my wife's actually been going through a little bit of postpartum depression. Now, postpartum depression isn't like, it's not a one size fits all issue as you, as you may or may not know. And quite frankly, my wife's only issue with it is that she's been randomly just crying from the fact that I've had to work and she has to spend eight hours out of the day taking care of our son by herself. 
and sometimes she just doesn't know what to do and she just gets overwhelmed sometimes and that's also postpartum depression it's not just purely anxiety depression and all this absolutely horrid stuff it's Oftentimes, it can just be simply that you're feeling overwhelmed and you don't want to do this by yourself. And that's fine and understandable. So it's been kind of stressful for me as a father figure to, and a husband to be there for everything and do everything that I need to do. However, I've stepped into the ring. I put my hat into the Thunderdome. And I have stepped up to the plate and accepted the challenge of fatherhood. And it's been going very well. So if you're someone out there that has a wife and she's been wanting a kid, but you haven't been giving her a kid because you're not ready or you don't know if you're ready. My advice to you is that when she's genuinely ready to have a kid, you're ready to have a kid. It doesn't really matter where your finances are, as long as you have good insurance, of course. It doesn't really matter where your mentality is. And if you're truly not mentally ready to be a father yet she's probably going to notice that something that i've noticed about this fatherhood trial this little fatherhood journey that i've been on so far is that i notice that when she expect what she expects out of me as a husband is also what she expects out of me as a father and it kind of like correlates between the two where her expectations of you as a man as are also her expectations of you as a father. And like biologically in their mind, when they're judging you and testing you and when women are driving you into a corner and pushing your buttons and seeing how you react and seeing how you handle situations, how you make decisions, how you present yourself to others, to herself, to her family, to your family. All of those are kind of like subconscious indicators to her on whether or not you are good father material as well. Because almost every woman out there always wants to have a kid. Now, obviously, there's exceptions to this, but nine times out of ten, a woman is going to want to be a mother one day down the road. Just whenever she is ready, whenever she feels she is ready. So in the time that you two are spending together, you should also just obviously be working on your mental health and your physical health and your hormonal health and just your health in general, holistic health. Because it's not really about you at that point. It's about the fact that you have a family now. When you do decide to give her the kid, it's not about you anymore. You're not doing this just for yourself. You're not doing it for the validation of others. You're doing it for the better health of your family. I know that this doesn't really make sense to people that don't have kids yet, but honestly, when the time comes, you really do just kind of step up to the plate naturally. In my opinion, this is gonna kind of be a spicy take, but I see a lot of broken families that get made because the man wasn't actually mentally ready to be a father and he wasn't getting himself ready but the woman wants to have a baby in hopes of fixing the relationship now that's obviously not the way that things go you both have to be very healthy for you to be able to raise a very healthy good kid people can be so desperate to save a relationship that they're willing to have a kid out of wedlock out of commitment just to try and save a relationship that's not going to be saved now, sometimes it does work out, sometimes it does, but that's not very often, and that's not the, the, the greater majority. And it's made me realize that, considering that I came from a broken um, sorry, it's made me realize that coming from a broken family myself, that I need to reconnect with the family that hasn't done me wrong, specifically my mother. On Christmas Day, I called my mother. And I told her about how I was feeling as a parent and that I need to, that I've had a lot of regrets about how we were, I was raised with her because when I was a kid, I was abused by my father and my parents divorced each other when I was eight. So it was a really rough time and I had always had a stigma against my father and there's nothing I could do about it now, unfortunately, because he's no longer 
with us. For the last 20 years or so, I had been looking at my mother as somebody that helped me. Not as my mother, but just like a person. Which is okay, but I didn't look at her as like a family member. And that's going to sound messed up to, to a lot of you, but... It, it, it is what it is because of how things were. So anyways, Christmas Day, I call her and I tell her about how I've been feeling as a father and that I want to spend more time with her and that I loved her and I really appreciated what she did to keep me safe away from my abusive father through all the years that she did. And she even had her family cut her off just because of how the situation was with me and my father. So she went through a whole lot to keep me safe so that way I could have the chance to be where I am today. So I called her and I thanked her and I was so appreciative and she was crying and I was crying and it, it was a beautiful 30 minute phone call. I'm kind of looking all over the place instead of at you. I apologize. It's just that my mind is kind of all over the place and I guess to keep things simple, man, um, being a father changed my perspective on so much. And it's made me realize that one of the things that's most precious in this life is the connection that you make with others, with your friends, your family, anyone. And you really do need to look at things as more than just, I'm the main character. You need, like, yeah, that's, an, I, that's another thing, actually, that I want to go into. For the longest time, I had main character syndrome. I was the main character of my life because I am the main character. But I was treating everyone else around me as, like, interactable NPCs that I could talk to and interact with and would make me feel good. But I didn't have to, like, return all that much. It was just, like, good company and good vibes, you know? But this also has changed my perspective on the fact that, like, this is a whole individual. My wife is the only other person that I haven't treated as like a means to an end. God, I sound like a fucking asshole. Ooh, boy. Okay, I am absolutely revealing all of my dirty colors today, aren't I? I know what I want to do with this channel. I want to help other families. I want to help other individuals create wonderful, beautiful families, regardless of where they are in their lives or in their situations. I want to be able to help people create a stronger community for themselves, a stronger fraternity, a stronger brotherhood, or a stronger sisterhood, whoever you are. If you're an already existing family, or if you're just an individual that has parents that haven't had good contact with your parents, not because of anything negative that they've done or you've done, but just because you've grown distant. I want to just help people. I want to be able to get a message out there where I am actually being able to influence people to get back in con connection with themselves and with others and discover that life really is beautiful. And there's a quote that I remember reading somewhere where it talks about, we only have two lives and the second life only begins when we realize that we have one. When you get to the point where you do realize that you only have this one chance, this one opportunity that you've been given, and you keep wasting it daily, just not being productive or not going towards your goal or your mission or your purpose in life or whatever it is that you want to do, if there's something in the back of your mind that kind of hangs there every single day, kind of like not a nagging feeling, but just like, you know, I should be doing something else, but I'm here instead. Make 2024 your year. I'm going to make a whole separate video about how to do that. I'm going to make a whole flow chart about what you need to do and what needs to happen. But make 2024 your year to be ready to be a parent, whether you're a father or a mother. Just, I want this to be a beautiful year because this has been a beautiful year for me. And I'm going to make this a wonderful year. So... If you're really interested in that, please subscribe to my channel. If you were interested in this video, please give it a like. I would love to hear some of your comments about my thoughts on this whole thing. I didn't write a script or anything. I just sat my ass down and just started talking. I'm going to be honest. 
So I know this thing has been all over the place and I hope it hasn't been like overwhelming or terrible to listen to, but I'm just going to be experimenting with some stuff over the next couple of weeks and see how it flows from there. So yeah, leave a comment below. Let me know how you feel and I'll see you in, I'll see you around, man. Take care.